Sorry. I've been working on this guide for a long time, guys. And, uh, you know, it's been uploaded for a while, but I forgot to take it off. Stealth. <laughs> uh, and in case you're wondering, why am I, uh, why am I stealthing and not in my cloak of bush form? Well, Alright, sup y'all, and welcome to the 8th and final edition of the Why You Should Play series, where today we're wrapping it up with our homeboy, the Assassin. And yes, this shit may have taken me a long time to do, but look, I could not find an account, so I leveled this dude up myself with my hard work and my hard-earned money, and hey, point is, it's here, and I'm glad that I made it. Because there's a lot of bullshit that's being spread around the assassin. So I'm glad I found out for myself that this shit turns on way faster than people think. And there's also a lot of synergy that people are not talking about. So let's talk about it here. And once again, I know this is the last edition of the Why You Should Play series for beginners. But don't worry, advanced guides coming soon. So with that out of the way, like, comment, and subscribe for me your boy the ooh -la, la community and whatever other bullshit reason you can think of to convince yourself to press those buttons let's get into it okay doke attribute allocation and this one i'm actually really excited to talk about because um i've been goofing around with uh allocation for my mage and also my assassin so what i'd like to do is 302 for the entirety of the first island uh, when I get towards the second island, I actually swap to 203 or I stay 302. And then if there's some mitigation issues, um, I go 311 and also 203 for slight mitigation issues. 203 is one that I have been absolutely loving because it gives you a little bit extra mitigation and also still gives you more damage with the um, extra crit rate. So it's cool. It's a nice little fresh thing. And I don't know, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Maybe you will too. All right, look, y'all, rogues have this issue, right, for the core abilities that we're about to talk about, where rogues don't really turn on until they get to Sinbad Rainforest and they unlock Poison Coat and Shiv, okay? That's the rotation that we're going to talk about until then. Until you get to Sinbad Rainforest as an assassin player, you're going to have to make do with whatever you got and just try to mainly focus on utility. Try to use the ability to counter the boss as best as possible because your DPS, well, it's not going to be its full potential until you do get to send bad rainforest. So make sure you're using whatever you got and make sure to counter the bosses as best as you can, because they're probably the weakest DPS class until they get to send bad rainforest. And that's where shit gets crazy. And even more so once they get um, to get the fishbone knives right here on Toto plane. Okay. So let's talk about their single target damage rotation for the highest DPS output as possible without any utility whatsoever. And we'll talk about where to sub that in. So first of all, for utility, you're gonna sub in your utility on slots two and four, okay? Um, so Poison Coat and Shiv are going to go first and third or second and fourth. If you need to, especially for the turtle boss on um, Baba Bo Coast, you can go interrupt first. You will get it the fastest out of any class in the entire game. So you can go like Roundhouse Kick into Poison Coat, into Cloak of Bush, into uh, Shiv, okay? But for right now, Poison Coat into Cloak of Bush, into Shiv, into Fishbone Throwing Knife is a great rotation. However, I do also see some people going uh, a build like this right here which is cloak of bush poison coat fishbone throwing knife into shiv personally i do prefer the poison coat into cloak of bush into shiv into fishbone throwing knife because uh you get the poison out quicker so it stacks faster you still get the cloak of bush and it'll still be active by the time you generate three mana in order to use shiv so you're still getting the extra damage on three attacks and the ability and then fishbone throwing knife i have on fourth because it's a really great ability because it has high variance. And what high variance means is that it has a high probability to do something amazing. Whenever you're stuck on a wall and you need like a Hail Mary play, Fishbone Throwing Knife would be great because if you throw um, three fish, uh, three fish bones instead of one or two, then you'll have an even higher chance of pushing that wall that you otherwise couldn't have done. So it's a really great high variance build. And it's just a fun build in general. Uh, it sucks in PvP though. Okay, so now we're actually going to skip to the AFK portion. This build also works for an AoE boss rotation. Then I'll get into the specifics right after. So for AFK, the cool thing about Rogue in case you don't know is that if you have your first three abilities set up as three 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 as long as your mana cost is below nine you can get three abilities out before 20 seconds and the reason why that's important is that if you want to maximize your exp gain 
if you have underneath nine mana, you get all three of those out before 20 seconds, and boom, you get three abilities out instead of two, as the normal DPS do, but uh, Assassins actually have the um, flexibility in order to get three off. So you can go Phantom Knives, into Fatal Knife, into Double Throw Knives, into Bounce, Bounce, Bounce. You generally don't want to get to Bounce, 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 but just in case you do, you might as well have an ability there, and Bounce, Bounce, Bounce is there. So Phantom Knife, set up the combo. Fatal knife to AoE again and get the combo bonus. From there you go, double throw knife just because it's a strong AoE and bounce, bounce, bounce from there just because it's good. So now if you want to talk about a AoE rotation, uh, you can go with something like this where you can go bounce, bounce, bounce. You can change this to cloak of bush. You put this in slot one and then you actually want to go like this. And the reason why that is, actually, no, this would be the best because uh, cloak of bush Cloak of Bush will only activate if you have a three mana or less ability. For Bounce, 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 it'll fall off before you can actually get it off. So you want to go Cloak of Bush and the Phantom Knives and the Fatal Knife and the Bounce, Bounce, Bounce on an AoE fight. Uh, so that way you have some extra mitigation in case there's any cleave involved, like the um, Ankylosaurus fight. Uh, and that way your extra damage doesn't fall off um, for your abilities. So yeah, this is what I would recommend for, or one of the versions of the AFK and the actual cleave rotation for Assassin would look something like this, either one of the two builds, depending on whether you need the mitigation or not. Okay, so now we get to talk about utility, and assassins have an absolute ton. Like, Jesus Christ. And, like, these dudes can rotate, like, three or four times through all of their abilities in one boss fight. Like, the attack speed on these guys is insane, especially if you keep the mana cost lower. Uh, so, first one we want to talk about, obviously, Cloak of Bush. Um, you're going to be using this pretty much every single fight. Um, you're in the front line, so you're going to be getting taken uh, cleave damage quite a lot, and it's really annoying. So, having some extra mitigation will really help you be able to tank bosses in case your tank goes down. Um, you'll be able to take a couple extra hits. You probably won't be able to take an ability, but the auto attacks for sure. Uh, you also have great things like roundhouse uh once again your standard interrupt um yeah it's good they have them and uh dude assassins they can interrupt a lot so coordinating your interrupt order is definitely super important and uh this is no different you also have abilities like zeal which is great because it uh gives you some healing um it's always important to look like if you're struggling in a fight don't just sit there and expect the healer to take over for it zeal does decent damage and actually heals you quite a bit so dude if your healer needs a break cut him some slack use a zeal don't be a dick as a lot of people often are it really won't take that much away from you um, you have some other things like Scatter Blade, which I believe is, yeah, right here. Uh, so you attack, strip two, increase the damage by 10%. That's great. Uh, there's so many fights that have buffs, whether that be a damage boost or mitigation or a shield. By the way, shields are strippable. It's very important to run things like that. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend running all that jazz. There is some more synergy uh, using technique, but it's a little bit overkill and takes away too much to give too little. So I don't really want to talk about that. But if I can, I'll make an updated guide in the future for my advanced guide where you can use all that to a, a higher degree. But if you're just breaking into Island 1, Island 2, beginning of Island 3, you're not really going to need to know that in my opinion. Okay clatter card and my god i'll link a reference image right here on what some top players are running but clatter card let's talk about why it's important and why you're building what you're building so in case you don't know giant jaw is absolutely nuts and it's even more so nuts on assassin dude these guys attack so goddamn fast and holy shit they can stack this up like crazy so getting a six piece of giant jaw is very important now the reason why i only say six piece and some people don't know why they're only building a six piece giant jaw and let me tell you why there's this card right here called typhoon dragon if you notice when you get a three star legendary it is cast an extra two layers of giant jaw each time you cast a damaging ability yeah that's ridiculous with how fast you can cycle abilities and attack in general on uh, giant jaw as an assassin yeah you're gonna want to run that so definitely pick up a three piece of flying wings as well you're gonna want to go six piece giant jaw three piece flying wings the rest is up to you um some of the other best in slot legendaries you get in case you don't know spinosaurus is a best in slot um dps legendary if you're playing a dps you need to be running this Honestly, for tanks too, if you can snag in a Spinosaurus, dude, that would help your team so goddamn much. And dude, if you're a tank, you know your clatter card means like absolute shit. And you know you have a lot of flexibility. So if you can grab a Spinosaurus for the team, hey, dude, you're a homie. Definitely work on that. Another great card I want to talk about that I feel is very underutilized right now is Tyrant Dragon. Once again, look at the bottom effect. When basic attacks go critical, they cast an extra one layer of giant jaw effect. Yeah, hey, that's going to add up really really fast that's gonna make the giant go pop 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 it's gonna be dope and you're gonna enjoy it i'm gonna enjoy it. it's gonna be great and uh yeah it's just a really good set clatter cards for assassins are incredibly tight but if you can get any combination of those like if you get the giant job if you get the flying wing 
what, dude, I know getting a three-star legendary is impossible, but some people are passing on that shit. And it's like, dude, come on. Buy it for the future. Hope to God you get it. If you're playing this game for a month or two longer, hey, you're eventually going to get some three-star legendaries. So, hey, stick it out. If you get that three-star legendary, while everybody else does not have that, you're going to become an absolute god. Like, literally, if you have Spinosaurus, everybody's going to want to have you in the group. Or just a three-star legendary in general. So, definitely, dude, don't pass up on legendaries. They're great. I know it's fun to go for commons and greens to get the early three stars. But trust me, build for the future. You will not regret it once you get there. I promise. All right, pets. Super simple. Grab assist. Get one of each element. Lightning. Earth. Frost. Fire. You're going to want to be able to optimize your DPS wherever you're at. Unfortunately, right now, I can't do that. If you, in case you don't know the reason why, if you look right now, I'm using a Gray Tiger, which I'm going to swap right now, and I'm getting minus 9%. But if I look over here at someone like Lois, he's getting 10% extra damage, which is insane. So definitely get an assist pad for everybody. Get the highest assist stat that you can. Uh, the assist stat is the blue one, by the way. So get that as high as you can. I'm actually going to swap over to this guy right now. Uh, and yeah, because the assist will help your damage the most. Definitely get on on that. And look forward to my advanced guys where I go into pet skills as well. Uh, but yeah. All right, last up, we have the money pit. And also, I get to show off my new cat. His name is Zeppeli. If you're a JoJo fan, shout outs to your boy. This guy is beautiful. So the tempering, you're going to go attack crit HP, same shit as every other DPS and healer. Uh, yeah, dump all your money into it. Um, some backups, you can go Impale if you like. If you want to go full DPS, you can drop the HP and you can go the Impale. That's a backup for y'all super broke boys, but trust me, you're going to need the mitigation in the form of HP um, once you get to Island 2 and beyond. So definitely go attack your HP when you can, but if you need, Impale is definitely a backup. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, me and Zeppel are going to go probably go play some fetch, have a good time. But hey, look, I know this is the last uh, Why You Should Play Series video, but trust me, there's going to be more Ula La videos to come, so do not fret. But yeah, hey. I've been Tectone. Y'all have been great. Hope y'all are having a damn good one. And as always, peace.